Ironically, this movie is going to need white people to see it to realize its full potential. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Dear White People. Dear White People. The minimum requirement of black friends needed to not seem racist has just been raised to two. Sorry, but your weed man, Tyrone, does not count. I really don't see the issue. Never ran into any lynch mob. It would be good to elect someone like you as school president. Someone else is running. Together, we can bring black back to Winchester. Yes! Who does Sam think she is? It's like Spike Lee and Oprah had some sort of pissed off baby. One year after Fruitvale Station made a big splash at the Sundance Film Festival, yet failed to get any traction in mainstream Hollywood, will Dear White People be able to fare any better? Now, the big Sundance winner this year is actually Whiplash, said to be a strong Oscar contender. But writer-director Justin Simeon did win the U.S. Dramatic Special Jury Award for Breakthrough Talent. They don't even award that every year, which either makes it special or apologetic. But still, clearly Sundance felt Dear White People was worthy of some level of recognition. Now to see if Hollywood and audiences agree. This is indeed an interesting time to discuss issues of race, as many would like to argue it no longer matters, while some would counter that the divide has simply become more subversive. And a certain level of humor has certainly entered the conversation, from the Boondocks comic strip and animated series, to the blog and book stuff white people like, to the new ABC sitcom Blackish. But while all of this commentary is going on, producers like Will Packer are quietly taking Hollywood by storm, and not by crying foul, but by playing the game. If Kevin Hart and Will Packer can rule the box office again and again and again, is there still a need for Spike Lee and Oprah's pissed off baby? Simeon himself is certainly entering Hollywood in a new age, where he worked his way up from social media manager at Sony, publicity assistant at Focus Features, and publicity coordinator at Paramount Pictures. Hmm. Publicity? Is that what Dear White People really is? A calculated effort by someone well-versed in what it takes to get the Twitterverse's attention? There has been keen interest in Dear White People thanks to an impressive trailer, but again, trailers are a publicity tool, while an actual movie is much harder to pull off. In fact, Simeon made a trailer for Dear White People before even shooting the movie itself in an effort to raise money to get it made. Sure enough, the original trailer went viral and Simeon practically doubled his financing goal on Indiegogo. So, is Dear White People actually a good movie, or just a really great headline? So, first off, purely based on craftsmanship, I'm surprised at how much Dear White People plays like a student film. I mean, you see movies like uh, Fruitvale Station and Whiplash come out of Sundance, and you assume a certain level of quality. But that assumption is unfortunately incorrect, because Justin Simeon's film is nowhere near on the same level as uh, Fruitvale Station and Whiplash. It is indeed much harder to make an actual film than a trailer. And I have to say, all the best parts of this movie are indeed in the trailer. Now, as I said in the open, this conversation about race uh, is being had in many places these days, uh, even to the point where it's on primetime network television with Blackish. So if you want to join the conversation this late in the game, you definitely need to add something fresh and concrete. And by concrete, I mean extremely well thought out. And that is also not the case with Dear White People. There are a lot of angry cliches in this movie, and I feel a lot of the logic is just convenient. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very immature, I would say. I think that comes not only from the student film perspective, but also from the, the lack of depth and um, intelligence, I'd have to say, unfortunately, in a lot of the arguments that are made in terms of the message of the film. Uh, now, but wait a minute, because this uh, is about to get very ironic. Now, of course, the film is called Dear White People, and a big plot point in the film is that these uh, white students at this college want to, sh uh, to throw a blackface party, where they all dress up in blackface, and, you know, it's really quite appalling. And the whole time I was watching the movie, I was like, no way! Would anyone actually do this in real life? At least not enough people to constitute a party. But then, lo and behold, over the credit sequence at the end, they showed actual photos from real white students at colleges recently who have held blackface parties. And it was appalling to behold. And I would also say that that's the movie that should have been made here. And I think it's probably what first inspired Justin Simeon to make this movie. But do you know what Dear White People is missing? And this is where the irony comes in. It's missing the white perspective. Uh, everything is told from the black student's point of view, and I think that therefore it makes no effort to understand where that racism is coming from, because that's the new angle to this conversation. Not even an angle. That's where to take the conversation next. In today's day and age, 
how can racism still exist? And not only does it still exist, but it seems to have become even more insidious. And to explore that aspect of, um, you know, this current culture that we live in and race relations would have been fresh, new, and concrete. And I think that Justin Simeon has to think to himself, hey, you know what? I am guilty of what my character in my film is accused of being, and that's presenting a one-sided argument. And Justin Simeon should think about how many white friends that he has, and agents and managers don't count. So, dear white people, by the way, and there were a number of white people in the audience, I just think this, this whole movie is a missed opportunity, and it's unfortunate because it came very close. But at the end of the day, while it hints at a phenomenon, this new level of racism that is fascinating and very disturbing, highly disturbing, unfortunately Justin Simeon isn't mature enough, or at least the film isn't mature enough, and it's too one-sided to really accurately tackle the subject. The actors did a very nice job, though. Uh, every one of them was very likable, uh, both the black and white actors, uh, and I just wish that you know, there were better roles available to them, particularly the black actors. We talk a lot about lack of roles out there for black talent, uh, and unfortunately, I don't think Justin Simeon created very good ones. All right, so that's my review of Dear White People. If you've seen the film, please leave your own thoughts down below. Thank you so much for tuning in, and you can check out some more episodes right now.